Hi, I'm Sheridan Boise. I'm a writer, a speaker, and a broadcaster. I've written a few books, one book called Resurrection Year, Turning Broken Dreams into New Beginnings, a book called Unseen Footprints, Encountering the Divine Along the Journey of Life, and a book on resilience, which you might find interesting. You can find more about me at SheridanBoise.com. And here is my little piece for this wonderful new book, Pause for Thought. My wife and I spent Christmas with friends on the Isle of Mull. What an enchanted place that is. The snow-capped mountains, the dramatic skies, the vivid yellows and browns of the landscape. One moment we drove through snowstorms, the next we watched the sun pierce through the clouds and flood the misty valley with amber light. Sitting in the conservatory of our holiday shack, we saw double rainbows from end to end. To me, Mull felt like a place of fairy tales. Natural beauty like that makes me happy. So do long train rides, secondhand bookshops, cosy pubs on rainy days, an engaging conversation, the giggles of a child, the music of New Order and Florence and the Machine, a good dim sum restaurant, crepes with sugar and lemon, a reader telling me that one of my books has helped them, and cherries dipped in dark chocolate. To paraphrase Benjamin Franklin's famous phrase, chocolate is proof enough that God exists and wants us to be happy. It's been said that the Bible has more to impart about joy than it does about happiness, and I think for good reason. All those things that make me happy are momentary. The chocolate dipped cherries are soon gone. The song is over in three and a half minutes. Mull's rainbows fade as quickly as they appear. In contrast, I believe Christian joy is enduring. It comes from the spirit of Christ who comes to live within us when we ask him to. And I've found this joy can be experienced even in unhappy times. But my Bible also says that every good and perfect gift is from God. And that includes ephemeral things like sunshine and food and happiness. God made the cherry. God gave humans the ability to make chocolate. The combination of both is divine, however fleeting the eating experience is. So savour today's moments of happiness. The tastes, the conversations, the sunlit valleys, they are momentary glimpses of a greater joy that's available to all of us. I take my pause for thought first thing in the morning. I find that just with all the things that are going around in my head, even at the moment that I wake up, the first thing I really need to do is actually just stop and be quiet before God. For me, that actually is an encounter with God. It's a moment where I am just present with God, as if a child is spending time with his father. Sometimes I will read the Bible as part of that time. Sometimes I will pray about particular things, specific requests that I have. But sometimes, actually, it's just silent solitude in God's presence. That's the best thing I can do to start my day with everything else that's going to go ahead, everything else that's going to be across my desk throughout the rest of the day. I need that time to just have the things on the to-do list scheduled in order of what I believe God wants me to do first and last. What's my pause for thought today? It goes back to five years ago when my wife and I came here from Australia. It was never our dream to come to the UK particularly. We were happy in Australia. But for 10 years before that, we had tried everything to start a family. And you name it, we tried it. We tried adoption, we tried IVF, we tried healing prayer, we tried special diets, we tried everything and nothing worked. And at the end of those 10 years, my wife really needed a new beginning. And when she was offered a job at Oxford University, we saw that as the new beginning that she needed. And so we came over here and we started our lives again. And you know what? That has been the beginning of something completely unprecedented unexpected, something I never would have expected to be doing, is for the last five years I've been talking about broken dreams to people. I did it through a memoir called Resurrection Year, I've done it on the radio, I've done it in speaking events all around the world, and I've, I've talked to thousands of people about their broken dream. And here's the thing that's on my mind, here's my pause for thought, the thing that stops me to think over and over again, it happened even today when I got yet another email of somebody who'd read the book and to be able to start their lives again, is that a broken dream does not have to be the end of you. In fact, it can be the beginning. In fact, the broken dream can be the making of you. God can take those broken pieces and turn them into something really quite beautiful. 
So here's my pause for thought, something to leave you with for the rest of the day. A greater tragedy than a broken dream is a life forever defined by one. Don't let it define you. You can start again.